We are Team ASCAP, uh, it's uh, Steven with, he's on a plane right now, uh, myself and Daniel uh, actually is not here at all this week, he was not, was not able to make it. And then we have uh, Marcus and Matt, our uh, awesome mentors. So Steven and I and uh, Daniel were from CSIRO, the, depart the astronomy department uh, based in Sydney. So we have this big telescope, as I said at the beginning of the week, uh, it, takes, uh, it observes the entire sky pretty much and uh, it has this uh, novel technology that allows it to get a lot of data very quickly. Um, so that telescope now, the ASCAP telescope, uh, produces, let's say in some cases, about uh, 10 terabytes per hour. Um, we have a dedicated supercomputer to work with this data and process them, and we process them on the ASCAP software. So the, uh, the aim of the ASCAP software, the, its goal is to actually take whatever the telescope observes, and creates images like the one on the right. Uh, it's a C++ code. Uh, it, uh, so uh, until recently, until this week, it was uh, running on CPU using uh, MPI for parallelization. Uh, there is also work uh, for CP multi-thread parallelization using OpenMP. Actually, Matt was working a lot on that. Um, so yes, uh, our main, main problem here is that we have just too much data. And um, so to understand the problem is that, you know, you take the data, the raw data that the telescope gives you and you Fourier transform that and you get this thing on the, on the right. So as you can see, it has a lot of uh, artifacts. It's not great. Although you observe the one in the middle, you get the one on the right. So our goal is to make the one on the right look better. So what we do uh, we uh, start. We do an iterative process that involves uh, a series of uh, matrix and vector operations and so on, and we slowly, slowly deconvolve, de perform a deconvolution in order to build uh, our final image. Uh, so we found we always what we do. We found uh, a peak, uh, the brightest pixel on our image, on our co current image, and we record its position, and we keep doing this. Uh, ah, yes, and after we do that, we actually subtract, uh, let's say, a function, a point spread function, which is, you could say it's a 2D Gaussian, from our dirty image. So while we do this, eventually, we, uh, we end up with noise on our residual, and the, all the position of the peaks are recorded in the middle. So we convolve that with a Gaussian, and that's our final result. So this is what ASCAPSOFT does. It takes a dirty image that has artifacts, performs some kind of deconvolution, and ends up with a much better image without those artifacts. Um, so, uh, our initial goal, or our goal for this week, uh, was to accelerate this uh, cycle, this cycling through the, the image to get something better. Uh, and uh, to do that, we, we had to parallelize the deconvolution code. So pretty much if you look at the code, it's, uh, it's a bunch of, you know, serial uh, functions, but there is also the main, let's say, the, the main function is called choose component um, that uh, takes up most of the time. And this has, let's say, a bunch of um, ifs inside it and depending on the configuration, the parameters you pass on the function, it chooses a different code path or it has a different, uh, let's say, um, code sections that uh, we could parallelize. So initially at the, the first days we did some um, uh, profiling with uh, Vtune, also with uh, just manual profiling by putting a bunch of printfs and in order to try to understand which uh, operation takes most of the time. Uh, so we broke things down um, and uh, at the end of the day we just perform a bunch of matrix vector operations and uh, some kind of reduction. Um, so yes, um, as I said, uh, that was our goal. So my, our strategy started by taking the, the initial code and uh, parallelizing using OpenMP on the CPU. Uh, after doing that, we proceed actually doing it on the uh, on with OpenACC. Um, yes. Uh, so we realized that uh, we didn't have a lot of heavy computations. Uh, our our computations, computations were quite uh, quite simple, and uh, yeah. So how the code evolved. So this is the initial CPU code. 
Um, and then we, one of the main functions that uh, we had to, uh, let's say, parallelize is the function that tries to find the peak on the image I was talking about. Um, although, uh, yes, uh, so the, let's say the, um, the example I gave, it's the simplest uh, version of the convolution. The code we have has a series of different options for the convolution. We parallelized a, a bit more complicated uh, version that uh, adds a, an extra step, which is instead of just uh, recording the position of a single pixel and using a single pixel for the um, image on the middle I had, it tries to find the best fitting uh, function. Think about as a, a different uh, a series of Gaussians of different sizes. And try, tries to find which one fits the best. Anyway, so now this code. So initially we started by uh, parallelizing the peak finding uh, algorithm. So we uh, yes, um, and at this point, as you can see, yeah, you, we had first of all to flatten our data because our data structures were images, were 2D data structures. We had to flatten our data. And an interesting point here is that uh, in order to, to find the maximum, we had actually to perform two loops. One to find the maximum value and another loop to find the index of that maximum value, which is uh, a bit of an overkill uh, since we could actually have this, you actually, we, we essentially have this information th from the first loop but apparently OpenACC doesn't have an option when it does a reduction to give you an index for your maximum element at the same time. Um, also initial, uh, we were adding some uh, data directives, moving uh, data in, uh, back and forth to the GPU uh, at the same place that we were doing the parallelization, and that was uh, pretty much an overkill. Um, so what we did, uh, we created a thing called the ACC Manager. It was pretty much a class that tries to uh, keep a global state of things, like uh, allocates all the memory we need initially, um, and uh, we run everything we want OpenAC, and then it allocates everything at the very end. So uh, it makes things much faster, let's say. Um, so yeah, and this is pretty much what it does. It has a uh, a function that does the allocations, the deallocations. We're using the, it's called the structured data management with OpenACC. We're using the enter data uh, and exit data directives. Um, so the speed that we achieved was up to 20 times uh, compared to what we had as, a, as an OpenMP, as a parallelized CPU version. Um, we didn't have any, we didn't develop something, you know, new. It, uh, the math are pretty much simple, just vector operations and uh, reductions. We, uh, although at the beginning of the week we were hoping also to, to try some real data, uh, we haven't done that, so we haven't had the time to do that. And I guess the next step would be that, to actually see how the algorithm and the GPU implementation behaves with real data. And uh, we didn't break ground on our field. We just, uh, well, I guess uh, uh, essentially we, we would say that we break ground in the case that we can accelerate the process of the, the, the processing uh, by substantial amount, which will eventually lead to fi faster uh, scientific results uh, and discoveries. Um, so, some problems we had with uh, ASCAPSoft, the main software. Uh, it's a quite a old software, it has been developed for more than 10 years. Uh, it uses a lot of C++ features and templates and all this fancy stuff, which uh, makes it, uh, you know, uh, easy to split things up in different files and make each file small, easy, easy to read uh, and store, you know, and can hide the, the very details of the code. Uh, but at the same time, um, it uses a bunch of these uh, fancy wrappers around, uh, you know, arrays. So, uh, and those structures, those data structures are not developed in uh, big data in mind. So we, we, have, we have been having uh, trouble uh, making those, uh, extracting the, let's say, pointers or contiguous uh, memory uh, chunks from these data structures to, in order to feed them to the GPU. 
Um, some other problems we had, um, actually the, the code we were using this week is brand new um, in the sense that uh, it's a major restructuring of the old code, which means that the entire build system was new. Uh, from an R build, a sconge build system, we went to a CMake, uh, and as a result, we, we encountered, encountered a lot of um, problems this week with building the actual software. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we just wasted a few days just trying to build the, the software. Um, Yes, as I said before actually, um, the, our problem is quite simple, we didn't have any complex math, uh, it's not, uh, our, all, all our algorithms are not compute bound, they're usually memory bound, although we're still getting a good performance improvement uh, using the GPU. Um, and yeah, now problems, yeah, we were really happy with the tools we had, the compilers, um, we didn't find any actual bugs and so on. We had some minor issues with a supercomputer, just uh, uh, some module, you know, conflicts or the order that we had to load the modules in order to compile the software, but uh, those were just minor. Uh, wish lists, uh, not much. As I said, we were really happy with the tools. I guess one of the few things that come in mind now is if a PGI compiler had an option to ignore um, compiler flags that doesn't recognize. For example, in order to compile our software, we had to use a mixture of uh, GCC and PGI. And that was because one of the main reasons for that was uh, because a bunch of libraries had uh, GCC compiler flags hard-coded in, the, in their CMake or in their build system. And that, as a result, um, PGI will just fail to compile because it didn't recognize the flag. Uh, it's just a, you know, so the only thing we ask is for more time in general to code. Uh, and uh, was it worth it? Uh, yes. Uh, for me personally, um, because I'm not part of the main ASCAPsoft uh, development team, it was an opportunity to better understand the software, how it works and the internals. Um, and maybe I should uh, talk about the domain, is that um, ASCAP soft, uh, actually uh, the ASCAP tel uh, telescope is going into the pilot survey mode uh, in about a month. So pretty much we're starting getting uh, full data and started doing the, uh, the full processing and so on. And uh, having a GPU implementation can help a lot given that uh, in order to process each field uh, that ASCAPs of observes at any given time, we require several hours. Now we might require less than an hour. Um, and yeah, of course, we're going to continue the development. That's uh, just the beginning. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you.